Hey everyone, we've got a jam-packed show for you this week. We're going to be telling you about some really cool free rules that you can get your hands on to play some epic Viking battles. We've got an awesome Kickstarter with some of the coolest cats you ever did see. We're giving away the limited edition Luke Skywalker. Oh yes, we are. If you want to win that, keep watching to find out how. And the guys are going to be telling us about war bands they've been working on for an upcoming Frostgrave week. Right, let's get the show on the road. Hey everyone, welcome to the Weekender. I'm Lloyd, and of course I'm joined by the ever-tasty Ben and Jerry. (laughs) Hello, tasty boys. How are you? Oh dear. Has it caught on yet? I didn't realise from last week. Is that that kind of thing? It's it's going to be a thing, according to Barry. I'm going to keep working on it, tasty boys. Don't you worry. (laughs) Oh, I know you are. Right, this prize that I've alluded to Mm. in, in the intro there. What what's so special about this? This Luke Skywalker we're giving away. What the heck? Why is this special? It's it's special because he's a Jedi. That's why it's special. It's also special because it's one of Fantasy Flight's limited edition. In fact, oh. it will be Fantasy Flight's last limited edition Star Wars because the next time we see a limited edition, it will be coming courtesy of Atomic Mass Games because the game's mm-hmm. moved across. So they occasionally do these for big conventions, um, the likes of Essen, um, Gen Con, Adepticon, and they'll do them, and they're only available in limited places for a limited amount of time. This time around for Christmas or Christmas period, um, the whole world has got Luke Skywalker on Hoth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, retailers across the globe were giving a limited amount of these to do with, as they will apparently, and for some boy, that yeah. for some that means making the prizes. The boy, yeah. For some, it means overcharging everybody in sight. It depends on the retailer. <laughs> Some retailers are a bit cheeky. Just so, saying. So this guy's like trying to get hen's teeth in at the minute, is yes. he? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What is he supposed to be retailing at? Well, at if, he was a, if, he, if he was a normal hero, it probably yeah. would have been around 15, 16 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've, I've seen a couple of UK sites selling him 75 pounds plus. Wow. Uh, and I've seen them going on Flea Bay for, you know, triple digits yeah so and and he's one of the new plastic kits so he comes with a choice of options you can have helmet yes. on helmet off yeah. visor up visor down mm-hmm. none of them standing over dax's poor dead body <laughs> <laughs> thankfully he's he's edged away from that a bit ready to uh, stab up an eight. that wouldn't be very good yeah <laughs> Yeah, although they've, they've done stuff in the past. I, I believe some of the previous ones they've done Darth Vader and they did uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, I think was the other one they did. Obi Wan's up there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Well, so yeah, this he's, is the latest nice. in the line yeah. of them. Wait a minute. Yeah. So. The other guy on the speeder died. Yes. That's... You know, that's never really registered with me that yeah, even though it the, even though the big so... it comes he... down and squishes it. <laughs> I, I have a sneaking suspicion he was dead before <laughs> he got the blast from the shot. So he was dead before they crashed. Yeah. So yeah. the the fact that there's no remain the remains were mostly buried by the uh, in fact those Imperials were doing the family a courtesy by burying uh. that body for them <laughs> just by mm, straight into the ground done dusted yeah. move on people Empire Strikes Back it really nailed its colours to the wall really quickly didn't <laughs> oh, it? Yeah. Oh yeah, very much so. <laughs> right, yeah. So if you want to win that, get your comments mm. in down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and come on over to ontabletop.com and get a comment in there too to increase your chances of winning. And remember to share the video across all your different social networks. That's important. Yes. Get it on Facebook, on Twitter. Yep. Drop it out there. It's always good to see other people uh, showing off to their friends and stuff. So, all yeah. the, all those Ebo kids. and MySpace. Yes. yes. <laughs> the, the Tinder books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, put it in your Tinder bio. That would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right moving on moving on we've got we've got an india of the week we do yeah what, and what, it's... What, are, what are we looking at is there or is there an india of the week as sexy as like any tinder profile that we might be appended to well it's called tinder fest no <laughs> uh, it's this is uh something a little bit different from what we normally look at normally we tend to look at uh, miniature ranges that come out from people uh but this week um we got the news that uh, little wars tv who yeah. do historical videos on YouTube, have put together their own set of free rules to get people interested in playing 
uh, historical war games. Sweet. And so they've done what all good companies just do and gone Viking. Hmm. Uh, and so this is a new set of rules called Raven Feast that we're going to be checking out. And it's free. It is totally free. Incredibly high production value hmm. for a free product, which I think is amazing. Uh, kind of boosted by their Patreon backers and that kind of thing. That, uh, well, let's see. Working on there. What's inside? Is this it? If I click this, does that open it? If you go to free downloads on the left hand side, or there as well. Oh, here we go. The right. Yeah. So they do uh, both a free, co- a full color PDF version and also a black and white PDF version as well. Uh, the book itself comes in at around, I think it's about 44, 45 pages. Yeah. Um, and the rules themselves. Oh, look, there's Jerry at the top again. Yeah, uh, I get around a lot. There he is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the rules themselves are kind of condensed to about f- four pages in the core rules. Um, oh, everything else right. is kind of just a different uh, sort of um, optional things you need to include, ways to set up scenarios, um, sort of additional things for veteran well, players as well. But it's a very, very cool little PDF. What do you mean it's four rules? Like, Because when I click on the PDF's 44 pages. Yeah, yeah. So 44 pages in total, <laughs> sort of going to the background and how to get st- stuck into it. But the actual core rules themselves are like those four pages in the center, which yeah. is pretty awesome. Oh, these pages. Oh, no, that's an ad. That's an ad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. It's okay. You can keep scrolling through and you'll find them eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the idea behind the, the game is that it's sort of focused around the age of Vikings invasion of, of England. Um, think, for example, the Last Kingdom and that kind of thing. So it's the, the Vikings have settled within Britain and they're battling over territory with the, uh, the Anglo-Saxons, so Alfred the Great and that kind of thing as well. Um, they go through sort of everything you need to try and get started. And I actually put together like a little um, sort of war band of my own to try and work out how many miniatures you'd need. And for the kind of 300 to 400 point limit, which is sort of like that starting point, it was only 11 models in my warband. Yeah. Um, and that was trying to make a slightly more um, so elite force. Like so. a ship's worth then? Yeah, basically like a raiding ship's yeah. worth. Now before of anybody ship. says you can, get a little, yeah, you can get a little more Vikings on a ship, I know you can get up like 60 Vikings sitting on a ship. Yes, I'm yeah. thinking like miniature ship, like how many Vikings <laughs> can I fit on a miniature ship? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting because if people are attempting to introduce friends to historic gaming, and if they already play a bit themselves, so if somebody plays Saga, for example, yeah, a Saga Viking force will split down into two or three raven faced forces, yes. which means yeah. then you can lend them to people who aren't necessarily uh, already playing historics, mm-hmm. and you can introduce them that way with this very light, yeah, but interesting rule set. Yeah, so the, the core of forces are kind of built around the idea of you having a Jarl or a, uh, or a Huskar, for example, leading the, the force. And then you've got a lot of the traditional stuff that you might imagine. So you've got Bondi and all that kind of thing and Herdman and stuff fighting alongside you. They've also included some additional rules in there just as a small box um, for kind of playing as Anglo-Saxon as well, if you want to do that. But one of the cool things that I really liked about it um, in terms of the actual making of the characters, they've even put in the Matrix for you to make your own like unique uh, yeah. Vikings. Uh, so, how, they, how they've started yeah. or, or pointed stats, rather. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to make a very particular character, say, for example, a, a special character, you know, Ragnar Lothbrok, for example, uh, then they have the options in there for you to make that based on the character, the miniature that you have, which is really cool. Um, and as you can see, see actually, some hey, of the additional stuff they've saga. put into this. <laughs> yes. So it, <laughs> it can never escape Saga. Uh, but including uh, included alongside the rules, they've actually got loads of stuff in there for hobbyists as well. Mm. So if you've never built anything to do with Vikings before, they show you how to build a hut. Um, if you've never painted Vikings before, they have some stuff in there for painting your first Vikings as well. So, for example, if you went out and bought one of the big Gripping Beast plastic box sets or maybe one of the other ones that, that exists out there, sat down and, you know, put all, like 12, 13 guys together, you'd have everything you need and then just get stuck in and do some modeling as well. It kind of reminds me of the old books that you used to get from Games Workshop with all the additional hobby stuff in the back of them. So, yeah. mm. I like the cardboard planking. That's a good idea. Yeah. They've used that same technique to make things like uh, palisade walls and everything as well like that for uh, other things. Um, but um, as well as, uh, obviously, we've talked about this being very good for like beginners because the rule system is very, very simple, very, very easy to get stuck into. Yeah. It's all based using D6. Um, you have to roll below your certain stat in order to hit, for example. And the other key thing that I think is really, really good, especially for new players, is that models aren't removed until the final phase of a turn. So even if you got wounded during your attack, you but still get to horrible. fight back before you get cut down, uh, which I think is really good. And it means that you can't, you don't just get like alpha striped off the table and you're like, oh, well, 
or my yeah. guys are dead kind of thing, which is... Uh, yeah. Weirdly, one of my favourite parts of the rules is the shooting. Yeah, I think the yeah. shooting's been done really well. Because well, they have... They've... They have a video up, sorry, Jerry, about it as well. Oh, if you want to head over to Little Wars TV, they've got a video where they're actually using this rule yes. set to play yeah. capturing Alfred the Great. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at that. Someone's vaping. Uh, I love that. It's more on the right. But yeah, the, um, the way they've, they've mechanically built the game is there's not a huge amount of modifiers in it. Yes. So you're not having to, especially if, if it's a, somebody who's brand new into war gaming, you're not having to go, okay, you hit on a four or less, except... In this case, you'll hit on a three or less, but then he's there, so it's actually only a one. None of that nonsense. You're just going, you know, it's it's whatever your hit is. And the way they've brought in uh, cover is if mm -hmm. you're firing at somebody, every piece of cover you pass is essentially another save. So yeah. if, if a, a unit of four Bondi archers are firing, you know, past a pig pen through a stand of trees and then into some people hiding behind a wall, then you get like essentially three saves as they just get yeah. negated. So you can attempt these ridiculous shots, but mm -hmm. in a lot of other games, you either get big modifiers or it would just, you know, it wouldn't matter if you were passing through an entire forest mm -hmm. um, or, <clears throat> you know, a stand of one bush, the, the it... modifiers are the same all the time. So this just yeah. adds a little bit of realism. It reminds me a little bit of the way that they did shooting in um, uh, Lord of the Rings uh, mm. from Games Workshop, where they had that kind of intervening terrain, actually giving you saves kind of thing. Um, what we actually saw just before then as well was, you know, those, with those rune cards that you were yeah. looking at, they're one of the additional things they've put in for um, veteran war gamers. So in addition to the kind of just standard rules of you just sit down and fight each other, they've also included um, these things. There's two sort of like additional option rules that you play with. The first of these is rune cards. So these are divvied out um, randomly to players at the beginning of a scenario, well, beginning of a game, mm -hmm. and you can use them to kind of effectively break the rules of the game for a second. So it might make you go first. It might make you get re-rolls, et cetera, et cetera. So they're a little bit like saga abilities in that respect. Yeah, but they're kind. Of, uh, but instead of them being useful throughout a game, they're kind of just like one and done, which I think yeah. is quite nice. So they're not they're not going to break things for the entirety of your time playing, which is cool. Um, and obviously, it's complicated without it being as complicated. I say complicated as something like Saga, because that's just another thing to try to get your head around with, isn't yeah. it, with the battle boards and stuff. The other thing they've added in, if you want to try and mess around with the rules a little bit more, is they put in this thing called Geld. So each do we have a link for whatever this is or yes yeah, so if you go back to the if you go back to the main rule book and scroll back up oh too many pages hold on <laughs> yeah if you go back into that and then scroll down past some of the rules uh you'll, you'll find it there um but anyway i'll talk about geld as we get through to it but you'll see it come up in a second when you when you're scrolling yeah. through after the main rules but geld each warband gets a set of gold or coins effectively that they get to spend during their turns and it allows you to do things like get re-rolls, for example, and that kind of thing. But when you kill certain elements of your enemy's force, you might get some of their geld yeah, for go. yourself. And then you can use that to buy, buy for additional things. Um, for example, get another additional rune card in your games, or maybe add an entire new berserker into your force as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's just another one of those things that's a really nice sort of additional bit to kind of give the edge to the game that maybe veterans were probably looking for, which is kind of cool. Um, we should also note, as you can see there, that they've also included ways for you to play things like large battles using this rule set. Obviously, it's not going to be as complex as other games out there that to do with all the sort of minutiae of it, but it kind of gives you the idea of being able to play with sort of like large multi-based miniatures, which is kind of cool. It's, it's, uh, it's exactly what I've done for Saga, for my Crusaders, yeah. where I've just, it's just essentially the exact same game, but you reduce the scale. And yeah. put multiple people on yeah. the bases so instead of seeing one man coming at you you're seeing four instead of seeing mm -hmm. four men at 16 or 20 yeah um, which is a genius way of doing it because it gives you that grand scale feel without having to uh, increase yeah. the real estate and the amount yeah. of stuff you need to do so they're really cool minis because i didn't even notice that they were 15 mil minis so there's really 15 mil minis yep i think they're um forged in battle or well forged yeah they look like forged in battle empire yeah. at war i think is their, yes. their ancient yeah. range i gotta get a close-up of that look at that <laughs> we'll have to maybe look at those guys in the future for a uh indie of the week actually in the amazing... show in the show that's the way to do it <laughs> they also have ancients as well so we'll, yes. we'll definitely have to check at that um 
another additional thing, and you can see it listed on this page as well, is that um, they've got the call rules, and they've got the additional stuff for room cards and, uh, and stuff like that in, available right now. Mm -hmm. But they're also going to be doing the mythological version of the game, well, sort of additional stuff for the game. So you're about to fight against like trolls and giants and include like the gods and that kind of thing in your game, which is pretty yeah. awesome. So uh, Raven Feast with a touch of magic. Yes, with a touch of magic. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's, it's what people want in the games is just yeah. a touch. You don't want too much. Yeah. Uh, and then they're, they're also going to be doing, and it was kind of um, previewed a little bit of the, in the final pages of the book, they're also going to be doing their own 2D printable miniatures. So you can go and cut out your own miniatures. And if you don't have like plastic models to play around with or metal models to play around with, you can instead just um, sort of print your own out and get playing with little paper ones instead, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's certainly something we've been seeing uh, becoming more and more of a thing, especially yeah. for historical war gamers. So. <laughs> what they could do is just take loads of photos of minis. Yeah, yeah and then you, you just, just cut, cut those out. Yeah. <laughs> like, just go to your mate and say, look, photograph your entire army and send it to me. And yeah. then you turn up with his exact army to, <laughs> to put in 2D. <laughs> put in 2D flatness. I'm and looking say, into the mirror, re mirror realm. Yeah. He, he's got a battle box like this size, a case and all. And you literally just whip out a wallet and go, here's my entire <laughs> army. Exactly, yeah. Um, but I, I just thought this was a really, really good idea yeah. for, for people getting stuck into the game, uh, well, into historical games and just wanting to play something to do with Vikings. Because um, obviously a lot of the things, these things can be quite expensive. And so having just yeah. free rules and the ability to just sort of like get stuck in with a handful of miniatures just seems like a really good idea to me. So, so just to refresh then, it's the website is called ravenfeast.com ravenfeast.com and it's brought to you guys by the little wars tv dude so go and check yes. out little wars tv on youtube yeah uh see war games soldiers and strategy may have something to do with this as well in the future yeah cool. so they're going to be sort of helping out they, they do plan to have a physical version of the book coming out in the future uh so obviously if you wanted to pay to have your own physical copy i do like a physical copy of a, of a book uh that it would be uh Nice way to sort of like give back to them for putting this all together as well, which is pretty cool. So. And I see Wait. they're uh, also sponsored by uh, HMGS, so the mm -hmm. Historical Miniatures Game Society, which means yeah. chances are they'll probably end up showing this off after the event when we're allowed back into things like Historicon. Yes. Uh, because yeah. the Little Wars guys generally put on a good spread of tables at Historicon. So. Yeah. And I see Saga mentioned regularly here. So this is not it's not like a replacement for Saga then. This is no. to accompany no, your games of Saga yeah. or maybe migrate from this to Saga yeah. and back and forth depending yes. on what you feel like at the time. It, yeah. it could be used to piggyback into other things and they they throw up, like they say, there. there's uh, an overwhelming amount of games out there. So they put in some of their favorites. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a really nice little touch on their part, kind of being like, this is a nice way to get, for you to get started. But don't forget, these games exist. Go and give yeah. these a go. So. Well, cool. That's your end of the week. Uh, coming up next, we're going to be talking about some Frostgrave stuff. Does Warhammer 40k rock your world? Check out store.ontabletop.com today, where you can save up to 20% across a wide range of hobby games, tools, and paints, including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Star Wars, Flames of War, Bolt Action, and many other incredible ranges. We are based here in Northern Ireland and rated 5 out of 5 on Trustpilot. All right, let's talk about Frostgrave for a minute. Why are we talking about Frostgrave, chaps? Because it's almost Christmas and it's, it's snow. No? That ties in really well. Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> this is the Christmas game. Christmas sissy game. Christmas, most Christmassy game. There we go. That you can play this Christmas. I think so. <laughs> and we certainly will be anyway. Uh, yeah. Because we're, we're gearing up for a myriad of Frostgrave like things. That's right. Over the Christmas week, we've got a whole week of Frostgrave stuff planned. We do. So yes. Watch out for Frostgrave week coming in a couple of weeks' time. Getting excited about that. But chappies, we're going to have a wee look. We're going to have a wee look at what you guys have been up to. Yeah. In, in the preparation for what we're at, because we're still in the process of filming. Because this this year has just been disastrous for getting anything done, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just looking over my shoulder, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So who wants to go first? Who who? You want to go first, Ben? Yeah, sure. Um, so I don't want to overshadow your really nice in-focus pictures with my. Other <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so one of the things we um, sort of decided when we were going to be putting together all the content for this week was that we'd make our own sort of war bands and go through mm. the idea of painting them up and modeling them because the amount of options that the guys at North Star and Osprey have kind of worked on together for this are phenomenal in terms mm. of plastic kits. Well, actually, if you're going to mention the plastic kits, let's yeah, just we can, have a look. Yeah, we can have a look at them now first. Yeah. So um, that's one of the core things I think is really nice about Frostgrave just from the out is that you have loads and loads of options in terms of how you want to build your war bands. Um, not only do you have the ability to just go in and pick up either sort of like metal versions of the wizards, but you can also buy the plastic wizards kits, which you'll see we've used uh, in a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, but you also then have the ability to make them either as traditional soldiers sort of wandering around the city of Felstad, mm. or you can dive in and make them cultists, which, or you can make them barbarians, for example. Which you box could, set have you been working on, Ben? You could even so make them I, gnolls. You can even make them gnolls as well. Actually. That's true. Yeah, so for me, I picked up the uh, Frostgrave Soldiers 1 and 2 box plus the Frostgrave Wizards 1 and 2 box. Uh, and I used those to kind of make mine because my sort of right. theme... So I've got this one and this one. Yes, mm -hmm. and then Wizards 2, as you can see just below. And Wizards 2. And Frostgrave Soldiers 2 up to the right. Um, so this basically gave me male and female versions of all of the soldiers that they've been doing for the game. So, which is pretty awesome. So, uh, and they all come in sort of like, uh, there's like between 20 models in sort of like a standard kit, I think, something like that. And mm. then you get like the eight Frostgrove Wizards as well. So there's loads of stuff you didn't play around with. Um, but I, I went for the theme of kind of like your traditional sort of medieval fantasy style warband going out to explore yeah. the ruins. Uh, so I used a lot of the stuff that was available previously and it's kind of like the first edition of the game as well. Um, but yeah, so I dived in and sort of built mine around the idea of a chronomancer. Um, so the kind of warband that was put together alongside the guys at, at uh, Osprey was the idea of a chronomancer wizard, as you can see there on the left, and her apprentice, who kind of used their sort of time dilation spells and that kind of thing in order to steal the treasures from uh, the city of Felstad rather than just fighting for it. So the warband is made up of a lot of kind of very agile and um, deft individuals. So you've got archers and rangers in there, as you can see, made up from the plastic kits. Alongside thieves, because you've got to have thieves, and then a bunch of thugs as well, who are represented here. Um, uh, so yeah, a really nice little sort of like a, a motley crew, I guess you'd say. Uh -huh. A Frostgrave uh, <laughs> um, sort of adventurers. And one of the things that you can see here as well is that a lot of the stuff that you get from uh, the North Star plastic kits can be mixed and matched together. So a lot of these are taken from not just the two um, soldier kits, but mixed in with some, there was occasionally a couple of bits that were taken from the Knight's kit, uh, which is slightly a slightly more heavily armored one. Mm. And there's also some accessories taken from the Wizard's kit and moved over onto the soldiers as well. Because um, it's all kind of like a little bit of like a Lego set. So you can just make it however you like, which I think is really nice. Um, yeah. It's really cool. I've used some bits and pieces from these sets in my Saga army as well. Mm -hmm. I used yeah. them for making up some archers and stuff. It's cool. Yeah. That's it. The, the fact that all the heads and all the arms are interchangeable on mm -hmm. all the kits, not just the human kits, yes, but all yeah. the kits. They're all they're all assembled in the same way. So if you want to stick some wizard arms onto a knoll, or if you want to put Snake Man with um, cultist bone arms on, or whatever, yes. you know, you can yeah. do these things. Whatever your madness takes hold so i kind of went when it came to sort of the painting and stuff um these are all the base coats of everything that i was sort of like rushing through trying to get them all done and things mm. and i kind of went for some sort of basic themes that would kind of mark them out as who they might be on the tabletop from like a like a like a, a, a gamer's eye view effectively mm -hmm. so you've got the rangers in kind of greens and browns you've got the thugs in sort of like a motley assortment of different colors uh, the blue still carries through across a lot of them to try and tie the wall band together um, then you've got the wizards in those, that kind of blue and orange, which I thought was a really nice contrast between the two. Um, and I like the little addition. And you get these on the, the sprues, the little familiar. So I got the little cat familiar hanging out with uh, the wizard as well, which I thought was really nice. And obviously, because she's a chronomancer, she's got a little uh, sand timer in her hand, which I thought was nice. Um, and then obviously, you've got the... Filth. Yeah, <laughs> they are deadly. And then you've got the thieves with obviously sort of like their backstabbing blacks and greys and things going on, which I thought was a really neat sort of addition. Mm. Um, and then the basing and stuff for it was just pretty simple. Uh, it was just a, a lot of snow flock down onto the bases, uh, added in with a little bit of sort of like um, vegetation just to kind of give it a little bit more of a tundra look, I suppose, uh, trying to mix it up a little bit as well, just to kind of match across, a, you know, a selection of different mats, maybe not just a traditional snow one. So... Um, 
What size is the force? Is this all the minis or is this just a selection of minis? So that's all the miniatures that you'd need for my warband in particular. Yeah. So you're, you're capped at 10 anyway. Yes. So you're never going to have yeah. more than that. Mm-hmm. You may have less, but you'll never have more. Yeah. And one of the core thing, one of the core things that was changed in second edition as well to try and help with all of this is, is that uh, it's thieves and thugs. Yeah. They don't cost any gold for you to hire. Mm. So you can make a warband up of 10 thugs if you wanted to and mm. just make sure that your wizard has all the money. <laughs> uh, but I, you can also obviously pay for more specialized swords as well. But it means that in the future, if people die, for example, and you can't really afford to get them back, normally that would be a massive thing that ruins a campaign. But what they've done with this is they've tried to make it, especially in second edition, so that you can just continue playing yeah. with your bunch of motley uh, assortment of thieves. Oh, and stuff. So just throw out. somebody, somebody cheap and nasty in to fill the breach exactly. or to carry the loot. I suppose is the other way to look at it. Um, yeah, yeah, but I think one of the one of the one of the things about Frostgrave that's really nice is that when you sit down to actually make your warband and decide how they're going to come together, mm. you kind of are weaving a story about how they came together as a group from the very beginning, and then that flows really nicely into the way that you sculpt everything and the way that you model it and put the accessories and all that kind of thing. And so immediately you get the idea of like, they're hanging out because of this. These guys have come to help them because this helps them. So for example, with the whole idea with the, the Chronomancer, why why, why would the thieves not want to hang around with a time-dilating wizard who can make <laughs> things easier for them? It, you know, that kind of thing. So it was really cool. <laughs> it is excellent. I like the color palette as well that you've gone with. Because that uh, the blue's very striking throughout. I've not been quite as striking with mine. <laughs> let, let, let's see what you've been up to then, Jay. I'm very muted. You've gone like completely the opposite direction, though, color-wise. Mm. Oh yeah, very much so. But well, it matches the theme of the kind of warband, which I think is nice. So. Right off the bat, I only used two boxes. Um, so I got the wizards to get the wizards, yeah. and then I got the barbarians for everything else. <laughs> um, oh, Jay wins on the size of the pictures. Look at that. Oh yeah, there won't be a focus, but look, look at the size. Never mind. Yeah, you crop a picture focus. and you get told off for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my my warband's led by a pair of elementalists because I'm all about exploding things in flashy, spectacular ways. Um, and I decided that I would do my wizard as a, a little homage to. Well, in fact, the entire warband's a homage to. Terry Pratchett. Oh, I thought but, you were uh, going to say yourself. No, no. <laughs> although it's that, an awesome that, disc world theme. That's although that, that face is amazing. I like the idea that the elementalist who's been out there for a bit is, you know, he may have started off in lovely red robes like his apprentice there, Tuggle Bent, can't yeah. sing, can't dance, can cast spells a little. But over time, when he's been out in the field, it's just sort of muted down to grey. Yeah. You know, he's, he's, he's done his time. He also has a crossbow because Rid Cully likes to shoot things. Uh, nothing purposeless in game it's just there to amuse me um but then after that i decided since i was going to go for everybody being barbarians um i needed some way to differentiate them so i've gone with a north of the wall sort of theme for my barbarians uh so there we have my set of three thugs so chicken wire medium dave and peachy and the motion 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 blur filter and now to be fair that's not all motion blur filter (laughs) <laughs> I didn't realize just how reflective Snowflock is. <laughs> they are beaming. They weren't that bright when I was taking the pictures behind me. There's not that much light on them, but I really, yeah. the camera seems to have gone wild. You've been snow blinded by the minutes. Snow blinded is amazing. There's my theme, uh, Zebo Muti, uh, who obviously just have daggers on them. And I quite like the, because that, that off, that left hand should be holding like a massive hammer or something but it just looks like come on yeah. come yeah. at me bro yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me your money or you're gonna get stabbed up they it's got cool. their lo- and weirdly they also got lovely gray cloaks because they're thieves <laughs> strange how we think about these things <laughs> um and then banjo chicken wires slower dumber brother or sorry medium dave slower dumb brother but big banjo there with his massive maul to thump people upside the head Slightly more specialised individual. Yeah, yeah very <laughs> much so. You know, have plus two damage in your face, Mr. Man. <laughs> but then I needed some way to differentiate them from the elite forces of my warband. So I decided to take a touch of the Night's Watch so that the guys in black are the elites, the guys in greys are the wildlings, they're just chaff. And that's uh, Weasel and Brav, the Hublander, mm-hmm. my Templar and Knight. Is your warband bigger than... Yeah. Ben's warband. Uh, they're, they're, they're both, both, both ten. Mm-hmm. 
So same figure count. I've got um, two thieves, three thugs, a knight, a templar, and a infantryman. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a bit of punch in there. The knight and the templar are well armored. Um, so they'll mostly be protecting the wizard while he yeah. explodes things. And if things go badly <laughs> wrong, then I'll just put a wall in front of me and run the other way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Justin's going to be helming more war bands. So I, I he's think going so. To be, yeah, uh... somebody got <laughs> alpha strike by a chronomancer on a regular basis. That's it. Poor Ben painting away, speed painting. Get ready for the week and doesn't even get to play them. Does no. Just but add insult to injury. And we'll never get them back again either. They'll probably no, get the studio away models now. Yeah. Some more uh, somewhere. But the thing that I quite liked about what we've just seen there is just how different and unique but two warbands look mm-hmm. from just messing around to, with a bunch of different plastic kits. And as Jerry was alluding to earlier, you can take them in all different sorts of directions as well. Like one of the other plastic kits that they do is a cultist swamp. Mm. which was kind of born out of one of the uh, the expansion books that they did for first edition, which is still available to be used with second. Yeah. Uh, and you can make just a, a, a set of really evil, dastardly individuals led by necromancers or a demonologist, for example, mm. and just play around with that and the different kits in order to make a really unique looking warband as well, which is cool. So. Well, because the, um, because the game itself isn't, doesn't determine what people are, there's no races yes. in it. Yeah. You could, if you wanted run an entire orc goblin human elf dive into the oath whatever. mark sets so, yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> grab the oath, especially the new because you've got the two elf um mm-hmm. sets the the light infantry would make really nice archers and rangers and stuff yeah and you've got the more heavily armored types because it's it's up to you how you choose to theme your stuff you may not want to go just pure human you can literally go nuts with whatever you want you can do yeah yeah, yeah. Really and cool. all that's all that's broken down in the the rule book then yeah yeah, so the rulebook does a really good job. Um, well, not that it didn't do it in first edition, but in second edition, they've sort of like added and sort of built on everything. Yeah, uh, I've got a copy of it here. We can have a quick look through. Yeah. Um, so it, it's definitely a game where uh, the kind of like meat and potatoes of how things work are, are quite simple <laughs> in effect. It's all sort of run off D20s, which is just awesome, <laughs> especially if you're a role-playing fan. Yeah. And then a lot of the complexity comes down into the kind of warband that you pick and the spells that your wizards then have, which is really cool. So they've kind of started off with a very simple baseline to get you started. And then the complexity comes in with all the additional things you add on top of that with the spells and then the way in which you play through scenarios and you meet interesting and diverse individuals and that kind of thing as well. And then so. kill them. And then kill them, yeah. <laughs> and the artwork is amazing. I'm just flecking through to find it some. It really is. Yeah, yeah. All, of the artwork Look at that. Been, all of the artwork is a new artist. Uh, it is, yeah. Rumor. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, sorry, Rue. More. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> it, yeah. it is Rumor, but it's hyphenated. That's their, yeah. that's their name. But their, their artwork's amazing. I, I really love what they've done to give that feel because it's, it gives this consistent look throughout the, the rulebook. Mm-hmm. Another thing that's uh, interesting for second edition is the scenarios. They've ex- they've doubled the amount of scenarios in the book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 20 scenarios now to choose from. Um, and the focus is more on playing the scenarios rather than just, mm-hmm. I'm going to make your head explode. Obviously, yeah. you can still make people's heads explode throughout like, the game. But like this lady here, she's definitely going to make someone's head explode. She's definitely going to make somebody's head explode, yeah. Um, but they are, uh, weirdly, Chronomancer, see? Filth, yep. filth everywhere. <laughs> yeah. um, In blue as well, perfect. Yeah, so. But the, the whole idea is that you should be playing out the, the scenarios and telling the stories, and they should be worth more to your war band than, or your wizard than actually just going out and just yes. killing, killing a thief yeah. or killing a thug. So... So adding more scenarios in is a great way of doing it. It's one of the nice things about the game as a whole, and it's something that we're going to go into in more depth when we get into the themed week uh, later in the later in the month. But uh, you can play it in a variety of different ways. So one of the core ways that you might just set up and play the game is akin to other skirmish games and just have it as a versus experience. So you can have just one person versus another. Um, but you can also play the game entirely solo using the perilous dark rules which are available for second edition as they were for first uh, and you can also play it as an in, as a co-op adventure as well yeah. um so you could sit down and play it with two wall bands working together you could even also play it as slightly more of a semi-cooperative experience mm-hmm. because yeah. as jerry was saying the focus is on the idea of you just playing through the scenario and 
at times, maybe a huge wandering demon it will step into the ruins of Felstad, and both your wizards are like, hold on a second, let's stop fighting each other and let's try and take out this demon first before we move on and carry on with yeah. our objectives and stuff. I haven't so. found a demon. I found like a golem of some, of some sort of wood construction golem. Yeah. Look at yeah. this. Yeah. It, it could either be a wandering monster or it could belong to a wizard because uh, yeah. some of the wizards can can summon they can constructs Ooh. so be lucky i think is the phrase on that one um <laughs> what's interesting because the the idea that you can play it sort of cooperatively or semi-cooperatively because every time people the treasure or there's a chance that something may appear or there are wandering monsters written into the scenario so you never it's never just you against oh. your opponent oh. oh there's monsters all right check this oh, yeah. out <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely a monster uh, uh, definitely is. Yeah, it looks like a hand of Tindalos. But uh, yeah, the, the best laid plans of mice and men can go horribly wrong when something yeah. like that appears over your shoulder when you thought that you've been butchering everybody quite happily. Yeah. Um, and with the, obviously this is second edition, there's a load more scenarios, but at the back of the book, there's a nice thing where if you've already got first edition books from about page 200-ish, it, it lists all the supplements that were available for first edition yep. and goes this is what it is so you get a little sort of paragraph and then here's what you need to do to yeah. fix it for second mm -hmm. which means if you're coming in fresh you can actually look and go well do i want to buy thaw of the lich king and then you read it and go yeah yeah i do or do i want to buy um perilous dark whatever and it tells you you know like solo rules are in this and do you need to make any changes no you don't or maybe yeah. yes you may need to tweak some things it doesn't tell you exactly what you you need to do you can get in there and start playing the games and, and working out how you wanted to adjust things yourself so it's not hard and fast but yeah. all of the yeah. all of the previous books are still very current for the game and most of them i think listed there have little no changes required that's you know, <laughs> right yeah. so as I say, as Jerry was saying as well, a lot of it is just a tightening up of what they did with the first the first edition, which is just nice to see, really. Um, and Joe is a prolific writer, and I'm sure there's going yes. to be a lot more stuff <laughs> coming in the future. I will also point out on the kind of like monsters front and that kind of thing, um, the guys at North Star do make a lot of the stuff from the best bestiary available. So a lot of the more unique monsters are available as miniatures uh, in metal from them. But the whole idea behind the game as well is that you can sort of like draw from all sorts of angles yeah. and that kind of thing. So if you've got stuff that you've maybe picked up from other worlds, for example, you know, a D and or just in your D and D collection, you can use that and filter that into the game as well, which I think is a really nice idea. Uh, and it just kind of makes it a little bit more of a toy box to play around with, which I think is really cool. So. Yeah, and we're going to be covering a little bit of the Red King stuff as well, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the Red it, King is the latest expansion. Yeah, because uh, over on the Star, I can see there's a whole section just down here. There is. Or the Red King. So you know how we were saying you could make a warband out of gnolls, for example? Yeah. There's no reason why you can't make a warband out of the new plastic demons if you wanted to kind of align your wizard with the machinations of the Red King, potentially, as well. So, um, And this kind of goes into that kind of semi-cooperative element that we were talking about. Uh, and it's something that we'll talk about more as well during the week uh, with Joe, which is pretty cool. So. That, yeah, uh, there's a, we go into a fair bit of detail on how that can be tied in, mm -hmm. but it's interesting because it, it, every time he releases a, a book, it's not just a bunch of new scenarios for the sake of a bunch of new scenarios. He tries to do something unique with it. Yes. And mm -hmm. the idea that um, somebody has done something terrible in Felstad in the past and thousands of years later, uh, it's now <laughs> it's now going to inflict its pain upon the modern denizens mm -hmm. there. So it's nothing to do with us. We were perfectly blameless when we were doing <laughs> in this place. If some wizard 3,000 years ago hadn't screwed the pooch on this, we wouldn't be having to deal with the Red King now. <laughs> say, you know. I just want to give us a quick example while we're talking about the minis and stuff. Here's yeah. the sort of sprues they come on, so th you yes. can see how mixy and matchy yeah. they are. So this yeah. is one of the ones that's been around for a while. The barbarians and it's yeah. really the barbarians good. are some of my favorite. I, I think they're probably my favorite sprues that they've done for Frostgrave. I just really love them, and I actually used them as the basis for one of my projects. Uh, I think it was mm. two years ago now, uh, when I was doing some stuff for another sort of like book themed project that I was working on but they're really nice uh, and the details on them are fantastic they work exceptionally well with washers because of all the leather and 
uh, the kind of like grim face, craggy faces and that kind of thing as well. So. They, they certainly did for me because that board <laughs> band was hammered out in a day. Yeah. Hey, that's some speed painting right there. <laughs> Have to. You can't, can't slow down. You never know who's catching up. Could be, could be a chronomancer. You don't exactly. want people catching. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's not blow all our beans. Nope. Uh, no. Stay tuned for the Frostgrave week uh, coming yes. after the Christmas week. So that mm -hmm. should be kind of landing. What date is that? The 21st? 21st. 21st and onwards Start, for that week, yeah. yeah starting the so. 21st. Um, it's great. It'll keep us all company and nice and frosty over the Christmas break. Mm. Right, chaps, let's move on and let's find out what's going on in the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. It's the Muck News. <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, kicking off the news this week uh, with uh, some Games Workshop stuff, who sort of changed tack when it came to uh, sort of what they were doing uh, over the weekend. And instead of previewing some additional stuff for 140,000 and Edge Sigma in the typical sense, they instead were looking towards the book side of things and Black Library, uh, which is... What the uh, hell? Top of yeah. Surely we're still going to get some sort of shiny miniature to look well, at. Well, there is a miniature. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, a miniature. Thank so, goodness yeah. there's one miniature. <laughs> uh, but this kind of get, builds off something that uh, Warren had been talking about on a previous, I think it was an XLBS where he was talking about sort of like um, delving into all the stuff that they've been doing in terms of the the, um, the stories that they tell for the Grimdark future and also the Mortal Realms. Uh, but on the uh, sort of 140,000 front, uh, we have some additional stuff that's coming out straight away for uh, the Horus Heresy. And those people who want to follow the Siege of Terror, so Mortis is the next book in that series. This is then followed on by a couple of new books for 140,000 as it stands today with God Blight and also Dark Imperium and Dark Imperium Plague War, which are actually um, sort of slightly tweaked rewrites of the Dark Imperium books to kind of bring them alongside the uh, sort of fluff as it exists right now. Um, so if you're interested in that story and you've maybe read Dark Imperium before, this is a slightly, this is a tweak to that. Uh, so it tells a story in a sort of new fashion. Are you saying of. they're retconning their novels now? They may have retconned something to try to bring it in line with what's going on. Yeah. So, um, bear that in mind when it comes to Dark Imperium and the second book, Plague War. So, so yeah, not that it would make that much difference to the vast majority of people, no. I'm sure. Um, but yeah, just that's something to keep it, to be aware of. It makes no difference to me because I've never read any of it. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, this then builds on to some more stuff for the Space Marines, as you might imagine, with the Swords of Kalth, uh, which is a new book by Graham McNeil. Uh, and this is where the new miniature comes in. Uh, because Yay! They've, des yeah, they've designed a new miniature who is definitely not Blackadder in space. Uh, this is Captain Uriel Ventress, who's the main character from the novel. And he comes forth as a new character for you to pick up and use within your forces the fourth the captain of the fourth company i believe uh has now crossed the rubicon primaris and become one of the new boys uh to play around in the ball pit of space marines so yeah very cool looking new miniature there but i think looks okay apart from the head maybe but then again maybe it's just the painting that's gone into there so yeah you're just cool. not used to seeing marines with hair that's true yeah I, I have there. enjoyed all the memes, as I was alluding to earlier, of uh, Blackadder from Blackadder 1 uh, being placed on top of that guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a nice little addition there. That's <laughs> one way of doing it, certainly. I don't uh, know. Addition it does oh, just look like a mop top slapped on him when you compare it, it to the bit, artwork yeah. beside it. It's a toupee. Yeah. <laughs> it looks kind of Romanesque. I mean, that would make sense. He is a, he is a uh, ultramarine, after all. Mm. So, uh, but yeah. Um, in addition to that, there's also a bunch of additional books for Warmer 40,000. Uh, so we'll just go through these quickly. There's Yay, book more called, books. Yeah, there's a new book called Pariah, which is coming out, which sort of delves into <laughs> slightly more the background behind uh, the sort of like the, the everyman within the world of Warmer 40,000. There's also the Book of Martyrs, which looks towards uh, what's going on with the Sisters of the Battle. There's Alpharius, which is going to be a book set within the, uh, the Horus Heresy. And then there's a bunch more. So there's Dawn of Fire, The Gates of Bone, and Gazgul Thraka, Prophet of the War, which is a book centered around, as you might imagine, Gaskell Thracker, who has returned to the Warhammer 40,000 world, not too, not too, in the not too distant yeah. past. Uh, there was also a pretty nifty book that's coming out called the Liber Xenologist, oh. which is going to be a background book, not pictured here, which looks at uh, sort of like background and lore for all of the different Xenos races as told yeah. from the Imperium's viewpoint, which I think is kind of cool. Are there any more books you're going to talk about before I keep browsing back up and down and up and down? <laughs> that's all of the 40k stuff. 
And now to the only two Mortal Realms <laughs> okay, books go, that have been go. revealed. Uh, so there's Git Slayer. Um, so this oh. is the second full novel for Gotrek and Felix. Uh, sorry, not Gotrek and Felix. That was a Freudian slip. There's no Felix. Or maybe is there. He may be a Stunkast Eternal who's lost his memory. Who knows? But anyway, this is the next story for uh, Gotrek Gunnison, who has arrived in the Mortal Realms, ready to slay everything once again. And um, he's going up against his um, hated foe, uh, the Greenskins. Once more in this I book. can't help but feel it's a massive step down for poor old Gotrek. He slayed he's, greater he, demons and he everything. He started <laughs> with like Troll Slayer, yeah. then Giant Slayer, then Demon Slayer, <laughs> and now he's Get Slayer. <laughs> But look how oh, many there are. There's loads oh, of these there's, gets. There's at least three there. That's enough for a crusade. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, there might be more. Oh, that's mushrooms. I thought yeah. that was little hats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there may be goblins underneath those. Uh, but anyway, uh, so this follows Gotrek as he seeks to remove the um, the rune of Grimnir, which has been yeah. fused into his chest. Um, and it, again, as I say, this is the second novel. Uh, there's been two so far, and then there was also some audio dramas that featured Brian Blessed. Uh, Please and, tell me the other two are Goit Slayer and Gimboid Slayer, just to complete the <laughs> Red Dwarf trilogy of Gotrek Gurnison books. Well, that's clear. I, wish that were. Yeah. I was looking at the artwork going, that's really cool artwork, but I couldn't figure out why he had a nipple tassel, but you've just explained what that is. It's a glowing rune that's fused into his chest, yeah. <laughs> and he's very annoyed that it's there, so yeah, as you might imagine, forgot. That'd be useful! You, just through the night, you want to light stuff up, just wander about. Very annoying when you're trying to sleep there. Yes, yeah. It's a, 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 a fire slayer nightlight, yeah. Uh, and this is then capped off by a new book for the Lumineth Realm Lords as well, called The End of Enlightenment, where they are trying to hold off the forces of the Necromancer, Nagash, as it tries to invade the realm of Hayesh, which is the realm of light. Um, so if you are interested in delving into the lore of both the Grimdark universe and also Age of Sigma, these books will be coming up over the next sort of six months or so going into next year. And interest, if you are interested in these books, we do tend to sell a few of them over on store.ontobletop.com. Uh, so you can always head on over there and pick up some books. Which are By merch. Cool. So, yes, yeah. unfortunately, we have the books listed as well. <laughs> <laughs> there are those people, like our very own Justin, who very much enjoy the novels of Black Library, and they are what brought me into the realm of reading much more. So I have quite a lot of Gotrek and Felix books here, as you can see. What the heck? So of course it does. It's about a dwarf. Yeah, so that's all my Gotrek and Felix and uh, omnibuses. Then I have some of the books, again... Which were part of the omnibuses, separated out into their individual books. Oh, so I have the Giant Slayer. Oh, and yeah. The, the last ones, and then all these sort of separate stories that they were in as well. So, well, what happens when they retcon those stories? You're going to buy them all again, Ben? Well, the old world's dead now. So, uh, and they have actually reproduced all of the old Godric and Story, Godric and Felix books in new omnibuses. So, if you want those ones in a fourth book omnibus, they do exist as well. Uh, I don't know about these ones. I think they exist as sort of digital versions, I think, now. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. So, yeah, now you've had a look at my lovely shelf as well. So, there you go. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one who will occasionally roll back yeah. and grab stuff on screen. Yeah. So, so, yeah. It's good. Yeah. I also so, have even more Black Library up there, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come right. to that. In a <laughs> oh, no, you've teased it now. At least tilt the camera. Ah, okay, sure. right. So, ne uh, you can't see it above Harry Dresden, but actually, if I go up even oh. further. So I've got my Joe Abercrombie selection over there. This is now just book talk with Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then beyond that, we have one of my favourite uh, sort of collection of books, which is Matthias Tholman, which is a really awesome book about a uh, witch hunter, which is very cool. Then I have Malice Darkblade. You've got to have Malice Darkblade. And the Dwarf Omnibus, which is also very good. Obviously, it's dwarves. All of those are signed, by the way. Which is very nice. And then I have some of the other sort of stuff they did for the Time of Legend as well, mm -hmm. uh, because they did some really good stuff uh, back before the old world was destroyed entirely. Well, they actually did kind of like a Horus Heresy thing where they went back and talked about the history of the Warhammer world. Uh, and they were really, really awesome stories. Um, very, very good indeed. So go check those out. I do believe they still exist on Black Library. So go and check those. So there you go. Sweet. As I say, I very much enjoy all the stories yeah, in the of, the, of the old world. So yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> De definitely go and find uh, Genevieve Undead. That yes, very, very good. Story. By Kim Newman. Yeah. yeah, a story that was potentially retconned until it was brought back into the End Times books as well. So there you go. That's a little what? nitpick for you. So yeah, they retcon. I'm glad that I've still got yeah. my originals from when they came out. In the yeah. And she may even exist in the Mortal Realms as well, potentially. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> But anyway, stepping away from my book collection, uh, oh, which I've just gone to. Talk about there. my book collection. Yeah. 
I would happily talk through all my rule books, actually. That'd be quite nice. But anyway, maybe that's something for the future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but we also have some more that's whimsical. It. Comment fantasy. below if you want Ben to just read his books to you. I'll just go. Uh, I watched a live stream quite recently of a man who just sat there and read his book on stream. Yeah. He didn't. Well, he didn't read it out. He just read it on just stream. It, just sat there quietly. Yeah. And he got hundreds of views. He, oh, he didn't even read it out loud. No. Wow. No. Yeah. I, I like to imagine he'd left the stream running and was just yeah. pushed. It, back it was just like a chill stream. Apparently, it was very fascinating. Well, I can clearly do the same and get hundreds of viewers. That would be great. That's seriously chill. You're going to wear your nice fancy robes. I I, I am. Uh, this is my lovely cardigan that I've got ready for winter, which is perfect reading attire. So I love it. Ben's also branded up, but you can't see it. <laughs> I'll have to Superman to get it out. Yeah, but yeah. So. <laughs> but anyway, uh, moving away from that, uh, we also have some whimsical fantasy, a little bit like we did last week. We talked about the warp block um, gubbins that were coming out uh, over Christmas, and this is some new miniatures for Moonstone, which is a, a favourite of uh, of Jerry's. Mm. Uh, the two new released box sets, uh, sort of like for standard uh, Moonstone releases, are Sir Hogwash there, as you can see. And also the administration of justice, so you can see below those, which are very Discworld esque. Uh, oh God, yes. To see. Um, but uh, Jerry also pointed out there's actually a sort of like a, a Christmas special mm. as well that they've done, which is pretty cool. I, I, before we move off that, I do love Tabby the Librarian. Yes. On the set cool. of movable steps being pushed by some form <laughs> of squire in a jousting style. Yeah. Uh, she also she does have a special great. rule about shushing people as well, mm. which is quite good. Shh. So yeah. No casting the spell. <laughs> Shh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, as always, they're fantastic. But yes, they have. Um, they've also decided to do until December twenty fourth, so Christmas Day. Uh, you can upgrade the Goblin dirigible, uh, or sorry, the Gnome dirigible. No, it's a Goblin one. Uh, to be a festive version for Old Grimble <laughs> snack. So, so when it says six pounds, there you are just getting the antlers, the new head, and the bag of presents. Uh, if you want the complete thing, you need to pick up the airship separately. But just for a peculiar, unusual little painting piece, yes. um, it, it's just amazing. Uh, I love it so much. Yeah. It's, a it's a nice little character addition to yeah. it. Really and, cool. and as always, uh, because it's Moonstone and it's so evocative, they've actually written the uh, Night Before Christmas, but for the airship, which is just, <laughs> you know, utterly darling. It so is. let me get this straight. Is that Santa Claus dropping gifts on people? That that is what we're going to go with. Yeah, that that's uh, as far as anybody is concerned. That is Santa uh, delivering moonstones to all the good girls yeah. and boys. That's how it's done. World. Yeah, fire yeah. yeah. an inflated toad. <laughs> there should be a cork in that anus. Uh, that's how you inflate them? There may be. You can fashion one if you if it's not. Who there. knows? I, I mean. I, <laughs> Does it, can you actually see the anus there? Because I imagine it's behind that big leather oh, strap. There's, there's a little X marks the spot somewhere. Uh, I'm, I'm trying not to look. Right, right here. <laughs> look, look very carefully. You see that X marks the spot. Well, maybe that's where they've stitched it shut. Oh, that's it. That oh work. God, that poor toad. That would work. <laughs> need to inflate something. To, mm. to be fair, I mean the legs are all bound up. If you want to go and add a bit of extra detailing, you could always run uh, strings from them down to the, yeah. the the airship as well to make sure that it doesn't fall off. And I just I just love the look. Every time you put <laughs> something out, they're just insane. Yeah, oh, they really it's are. So much yeah. fun. So yeah. that's somebody sat down and went, I want to oh. make a toad airship. Oh, oh. <laughs> What's oh. the most mental way I can do? Oh, I can do it like this. <laughs> Sweet. So yeah. good. Yeah, so if you want that in time for Christmas, get in early. What size is this airship? Is it really small or is that base really big? Uh, I think that's probably a 50 mil base, maybe a 60 mil base. It's it's mm. their their stuff is scaled large anyway. So yeah, it's they're, like 32-ish. They're, they're 32, 35-ish. So yeah. the little gnome is probably the guts of, you know, 30 mil himself with his head sticking out there. So it's it's relatively beefy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a nice little set of releases, and they tend to always have something fun to look at. Um, mm. As we talked about when we did them as an indie of the week as well. So yeah, really awesome little uh, set of miniatures from those guys. There's even a special scenario for Grimble Snack if you do fancy picking it up and having Very some festive cool. fun in the world of Winston. 
Yeah. Uh, next, we're moving on to another Christmas miniature, and this is from the guys at War Cradle for the World of Mythos. Um, so this is Morokos, who is the Christmas miniature that can be used across all of the different factions within Mythos. Mm. So whoever you play, you can include him in your games. Um, he comes with uh, two miniatures in the set, and he can be either kind or cruel when you play with him. So in his kind mode, which is on the left, he gives out buffs and <laughs> presents, as it were, to your group. Pictured or, on the left? He looks creepy in both. Well, yes, that's very true. <laughs> uh, or you can be creepy and cruel with the version of him on the right, where he gets out the claws, as it were, and he starts hacking apart the opposing warband because that's what he does. So, yeah, very, very cool stuff indeed. Uh, this will be available from the guys at War Cradle over on the Whaling Games site until the end of December. So go and check that out and see whether or not you want to, want to pick him up. Otherwise, he will be vanishing into the ether once more. It's like so, a yeah. child catcher from Mythos. Come on, Indeed. children, lollipops. Yeah. And then you get up close and you get eaten. Yeah. It's a I perfectly love... Mythos way of telling mm. a Christmas tale. Which is oh, really yeah. Cool. I love the sharpness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're very Jack Frosty. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool mix. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we move away from the snowy winters of Christmas time and instead head to the desert next uh, with a new set that has come out from the guys at uh, Plastic Soldier Company based on the miniatures by Adler. Uh, so this is a new one of their Ultracast 20 millimeter sets, which is based on the British 8th Army. And much like the Waffen SS that we looked at in previous weeks, this is a kind of uh, sort of one-stop shop for you to sort of get started with the 8th Army. Um, so it comes with a selection of HQ options alongside the NCOs. Mm -hmm. Plus you also get a lot of riflemen. I believe there's 18 of them in the set alongside uh, LMG teams and mortar teams, which are both walking and prone. So you've got them set up for sort of digging in and also for charging off to go and set up somewhere else as well, which is really cool. So a nice little sort of set of options for those people that want to dive in and do something a little bit skirmishy with uh, battle group. Um, again, based in their 20 million materials. Too. Yes, 20 mil, so perfectly scaled for battle group itself. Yeah. And for your tanks. And for your tanks, of course, yeah. Go on, um, go on, do it. Yeah. Uh, but some really nice detailed miniatures again that you can yeah. see there, all sort of like one piece as well, which is really nice to see, especially with those ones there for the regular infantry. I mean, you can just pop them off and get them, uh, get stuck in with the painting. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be sort of like hoping to get these down to the tabletop quickly, I think these would work really nicely with a bit of contrast over the top of them. Would work exceptionally nicely, especially for that kind of desert look as well. Mm -hmm works really nicely yeah. with that kind of um, contrast scheme. Except you've got some mold lines and things you really should take care of first. Yeah, you can just break out the knife and sort those out, yeah. but you should be ready to go after that. So, yeah. It's cool. surprising that they went to North Africa, considering the first set being the, was uh, the SS. SS yeah. <laughs> dressed yeah. for, well, probably Western Europe. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the fact they've nipped off to do the, the uh, desert rats in North Africa. I yeah. wonder where they're going to go next. Probably I think they're probably just looking at and go Pacific or something like maybe. that, just to really, really confuse people. I guess it what comes. I guess it depends on what comes from the Adler miniatures range and carries over, or what they want to do themselves mm -hmm. as well. I suppose. So yeah, it'd be cool to see. But uh, cool. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing more of that. Yeah, really nice to see more battle group and uh, twenty eight mil stuff coming out for those. Uh, no, no, that's twenty mil. Twenty mil. Sorry, yeah, twenty mil, not twenty eight mil. Uh, but yes. Moving on from that, we're also looking at some 28 mil stuff, uh, which has come from the guys at Strata Miniatures and also sculptors Russ Charles and Tom Lishman. Uh, so you may remember a couple of months ago, we looked at these, and this is a set of combat wheelchair miniatures, your heroes for use in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, because there was a, an individual who put together some rules for this uh, online so you could use these kind of magical contraptions in your games if you wanted to try and throw a little bit of representation, representation your way for those people that are sitting in their wheelchairs and stuff. Um, so if you wanted to play as one of these characters, they've now done a set of half-elves and humans with uh, options for a bard, which comes with both a male and female variant, as well as ranger, wizard, and fighter. Uh, and so all of the rules for these are available online for free. We'll make sure you put them, I'll put them down in the show notes below. Uh, you can actually find them in the link in that article as well, if you want to click through to that from the show notes too. Um, but they're all on there for free. You can seamlessly blend them into your D&D &D games if you so wish. And it just gives you another option for playing as heroes in your fantasy adventure games, which is pretty cool. Um, really nicely sculpted uh, from the guys that, from Charles and Lishman there, as you can see. And I really like that they've got 
not just their weapons in hand, but all of the accessories and stuff have kind of been piled onto the back of the uh, the wheelchairs as well, which I think is really nice. Uh, so it's a really interesting piece that you're going to be painting up as well for your friends if you want to play as one of these characters. Um, if you've been keeping up with Critical Role, for example, uh, one of the NPCs within that game by Matt Mercer uh, is indeed a user of a combat wheelchair. Uh, so if you wanted to play around and see how that works in uh, in the game, you can watch some of the latest episodes of that and see how it all comes together because it's pretty cool mechanically. Um, some really nice stuff in there there's some really nice options for kind of like adding hovering magic to them and also the idea that you can make them into sort of like uh, spider legged um combat wheelchairs as well so if you wanted to make someone who had something a little bit more of the steampunk about them you can do that as well which is really nice to see uh so yeah some good new options from the guys at strata there um available you can field your golden horde or sorry silver exactly. horde from uh disc world exactly you could do that yeah the aged uh, barbarians yeah but um, this set is actually available as either, well, in three different ways, in a way. You can either get them as 3D printable STL files, so you can just print them off yourself, or you could also get them in both metal or resin, whichever you prefer. Um, so they are both available, all available in that format from their web store. So well, all of these ones we're currently looking at. Yes, so all of these plus the first wave of miniatures are all available on their web store uh, in all those different formats that I just mentioned. So yeah, very cool. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then we finish off with something sci-fi. Uh, this is from the guys at Free League Publishing. They previewed a new supplement which is going to be coming out uh, sort of very soon for Alien RPG. And this is the uh, set that allows you to play as colonial marines in your open world RPG games and also your one shots as well, if you, if you so desire, because the marines don't last long against those xenomorphs regardless, really. Um, so if you wanted to take a deep dive into how the colonial marines work within the world of Alien, then this book will allow you to do so. Uh, it's going to come with a whole bunch of expanded options for playing colonial marines, exploring their weaponry and the kind of backstory behind them and sort of how, the, how you would play them within the world. There's also going to be six new scenarios that are all kind of linked together so you can play through missions with your group of colonial marines uh, going against the likes of corporations as well as the alien threat that is the xenomorphs but this all then combines together into a final scenario called the end game where you'll work out who the big bad is at the very end of it all my money is on Wayland yutani because it always thing. is Wayland yutani <laughs> <laughs> they are the worst yeah. just simply the worst they're not trying to feed children to face huggers. <laughs> is this some of the, the artwork from the book? Yeah, so this is some of the really nice artwork that they've included as part of the book, which is just astonishing. Really, and really, really high-res stuff too. Yeah. Uh, thank God for press packs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this uh, really sort of uh, drags you into the world of Alien and the Colonial Marines. And I love that you can kind of take them in a little bit of a different direction rather mm. than maybe just doing it in the standard Aliens format. You can have them going off and doing something a little bit more sort of... Uh, Sort of low key, I guess you could yeah. say. There's bound to be people who need pacified, who exactly. are knuckling yeah. down under the corporation's yeah. rule. Yeah. Send in the Marines. And this yeah. is coming from Free League, and who have now decided that they're just called Free League Publishing. Yes. Yeah. Well, right. Free League, Free League, and have always been Free League Publishing at the same time, but they have clarified this that it is now just Free League Publishing for everyone involved. So there you go. Because <laughs> we made such a big deal of it at the time. We were going to continue to call them Free League, and, but we're not now. Now we're just going to call you Free League. But that's because free elegance just sounds like an amazing word, a couple of words to say. <laughs> so <laughs> but there you go. Some really awesome stuff there for uh, Aliens fans. The actual role-playing game itself is really good fun uh, if you want to yeah. dive in and play it. Really simple and sort of narrative-driven, which is always nice to see. Builds, a lot, builds on a lot of what they've done in the past from things like Tales from the Loop and that kind of stuff as well. Uh, but obviously with an alien vibe. And as I, as I mentioned, as I was talking at the start of this little bit, you can play it in two different ways. So you can either play it as a sort of like one-off cinematic event mm. where everyone's probably going to die, or you can play it as a little bit more of a sort of like open world, long form RPG as well, if you want yeah. to do it that way too. Come pin it up. Yes. Cool. Moving on then, Ben. Mm -hmm. Kickstarters. Yes. Let's yeah. jump into that and see what we've got this week. So we have two Kickstarters to check out this week, uh, both looking at miniatures. The first of these... Yeah, is... no books. Yeah. No books. <laughs> the first of these is the Green Skull Castle Goblin miniatures, mm. uh, which Jerry has actually been looking at as part of a, a set of unboxings, the first of I, which came I out have, this week. Yeah. Um, the, these are a set of 15 fantastic uh, goblins. They are actually 32 mils, so they're, they're yes. bigger than your average yeah. bear. Perfect for Moonstone. Um, but each one is each one is an individual 
sculpt. They're all unique, very characterful, so great for just collectors looking to uh, paint up something different. Yeah. Or if people want to actually use them for their games, then they can. And they're broke down into three factions currently. So you've got the Wise, the Craftsmen, and the Warriors. Uh, and in this Kickstarter, you can pick them up either as individuals or the whole crowd together. And they're a barrel of laughs some of them are very definitely pop culture or video game <laughs> based. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are just wacky, uh, and they may be based <laughs> on something that I'm unaware of and haven't seen yet. Uh, if you go down, you'll start heading some really nice um, painted versions. Um, so they've already started tearing through stretch goals, and you'll see them towards the end because there, there are some great stretch goals in there. But there's the first set. So Schnicked was the first one that they created. They all have this very unusual bulbous looking nose, which I, I think that. is, I, I love it to bits. I've yeah. seen some people complaining about it. They're resin miniatures, folks. If you don't like it, take a knife and just clip it off and you've got a regular goblin nose then. Suck it up, <laughs> people. But you can see we've got a uh, top right there, the Zuxi is quite clearly the witcher he yeah, has his two yeah. swords yeah. uh zumbag or zabugu mag or whatever the hell that is in the middle <laughs> is the green goblin from spider-man yeah chucking yeah. his pumpkin bombs paint uh, that bomb uh, orange and you've uh, got paint, a pumpkin, pumpkin yeah. bomb you've got crumbs obviously uh, uh Conan, uh, Conan-esque fellow. Um, there's an awful lot. The craftsmen have an awful lot of World of Warcraft based ones, uh, like Gul'dan and um, mm -hmm. the mortal form of Deathwing. You've got the Assassin's Creed. One of my favorites because, well, two reasons. There are lots of little people, uh, little rag doll type voodoo dolls kicking around. Yeah. It's just a theme they have. <laughs> He has one sitting on his his uh, back of his head yeah. with a dagger with a knife reversed, yeah. <laughs> like he's crawling up. But the other thing is, Assassin's Creed is obviously famous for being on buildings and jumping off. And whenever you see people doing things like this, they normally put it on like a on a, a chimney or on a roof, and it makes no sense when they're on the ground. He's just sitting on top of a dog kennel, which is just perfect. It makes so much sense. Less it's prone like, to breaking bones and stuff. Yeah. Very, very less. <laughs> uh, uh, the dog's backside is actually sticking out the back of that kennel as well. It's not big enough. Oh, brilliant. Um, I'm so, loving, I love these little flipping voodoo dolls. These yeah, are cool. oh, they're, they're, they're everywhere. They're, they're Every now and again, you'll see one peering out like the uh, Nambi in the top right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who's actually yeah. Deathwing. It's just peering out the top of his like dungarees. Yeah. Um, and there's one having a kip on top of a staff. So that's <laughs> that's the that's the 15 main ones. But if you start going down to the stretch goals, the very first stretch goal they unlocked was He Man. Do on, I keep going? Oh yeah, yeah. Need to yeah, there, keep going. There, keep there, going. They are just blah blah blah. That's just showing how you can get them. We don't care about that. Here we what go. Here's here's the big things. So these have all been unlocked. These are all the stretch goals so far. I think the top left and top right, Skrakak and Auric, are possibly Kickstarter exclusive. I don't know if they all are. <laughs> um, but in the middle, you can see He-Man with his massive bowl cut. Um, you might see them better in the updates section. If you go to updates, I don't know if they've got up. I believe there are some painted versions somewhere on here as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another nice thing they've done is they've listed every painter who's painted below what they've done, which is great because I've gone off and just started following a lot of these painters because I really like the style of how they've done yeah. this. Because the guys that were behind this, uh, you may remember them from Terrible Kids stuff, which is still a yeah. thing, obviously. Yeah. Um, but they kind of worked on that. And so they had they had a big part of like showing off really nice bespoke models on their web store and also crediting the artists and that mm. kind of thing as well in there, which was always nice to see. So. There you go. There's some of the newer ones as well. Yeah. So Auric <laughs> the King, who, who again is another Warcraft-esque reference. If any Horde players are out there, you'll recognize him. Uh, there he is. <laughs> I'm, I'm positive they are bigger pictures than the updates. They probably are, but, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Oh, you mean go here? Yeah. Right. So uh, there's the more recent. Yeah. It's a little wicked voodoo dolls have been unleashed. Uh, you can probably skip the caps. I gotta click everything to find out what they are. Oh, you are, are gonna click everything. There's God Card the Warrior. So there, there's the first. So that's uh, He Man himself, and that is I'm pretty sure is it Maleficent. It looks, looks like, like Maleficent. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I'd be tempted to paint her up more as um, Repeat uh, Rita Repulsa <laughs> from uh, from Power Rangers. <laughs> uh, oh, maybe it's that. But yeah, I love He Man or Battle Cat. Or in this case, Goblin on Hyena. Yeah. But he's, he's still got the rocking the amazing uh, bowl cut haircut. Yeah. That's it. That's like a Space Marine haircut. 
Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just uh, every time they've released something, or every time a stretch, stretch goal is stretch goal it, for cardboard. Oh no, it's a bag. No, no, it's the, that, that's <laughs> well, it's the little pins because um, that's just how they come in those little canvas bags. Mm -hmm. But yeah, each each time they unlock a stretch goal and the next one comes up, you're just looking at them going, well, they're all just amazing. I love them yeah. bits. I like that it's all 32 mil as well because it means that they can kind of sit alongside a lot of other miniatures out there. Uh, and they do, they are like, they're slightly chunkier, some of them anyway, because of the, you know, the ma muscle mass, for example, or the weapons they might have. But they kind of sit really nicely alongside a lot of the other ranges that exist out there in the moment. And so you could mix them in quite nicely with a lot of armies if you're going to make a big green skin force and have characterful leaders and that kind of thing leading the way, which is pretty cool. So. I like it because they could all be related and that's why they all got the big bulgy nose. <laughs> in a way that kings and queens and whatnot like to inbreed and end up with yes. really weird big noses and stuff. So, so you reckon all goblins are inbred? Well, these particular ones could just be of a family. Well, they all come from Green Skull Castle, so... Living in the hills too long. So they haven't said anything about whether or not He-Man's going to get a Skeletor-like opponent, although I have asked <laughs> I have asked for Goblin Lich on some cool. form of battle hyena to fight yeah. against me. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, funded and 13 days to go. 13 okay. days left. Yeah. When you see this. Yeah. Sweet. Right, Chappies, what's last? What is the last bit of the show? Uh, so next up, uh, we're sticking with something a little bit weird and creative. Uh, and this is from Blood Carrot Knights, uh, supported by Wendy's Miniatures and Scale Bros, who are actually doing the sort of um, shipping out of all the miniatures here. But this is a set of, and bear with me, cat <laughs> Cat knights, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. flipping cats. <laughs> these are fifty-four millimeter, so they're um, hobbyist painter scale uh, collectibles that you can get stuck into and paint up. And much like what with what we've just seen from the Green Skull Castle goblins, a lot of them are kind of based on sort of popular culture or maybe mm. historical figures. So, for example, you've got Fernand the Destroyer. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> you've also got William. Kalas, uh, get uh, it? Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh. <laughs> There's also some. Uh, I mean, and if you didn't get what the what the theme of this was, you will when you hear all the names. Sir Kittingham, another cat reference. Meow Romant, uh, and the Meow Lord of Catsville. <laughs> 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 Um, but no, these are essentially. Well, why are you really, enjoying this so much? <laughs> I just think I just think it's amazing, and I think the sculpting on these is phenomenal. <laughs> I think the detail they've worked on these is brilliant, and I think if you're going to, you know, pick something up for someone who just really liked painting miniatures, I think these would be a really fantastic sort of like um, uh, avenue to go down. The guys at Scale Bros and Wendy's actually have done some really nice stuff in the past, where they've done like mouse and like hamster gerbil versions of yeah. like Lord of the Rings characters and that kind of things that we've looked at in the past as well uh, on the show. But I just think these are really nice sort of like step in a new direction for them, playing around with the idea of anthropomorphic cat, uh, heroes and sort of providing people with another interesting thing to paint because every so often you may get tired of painting your same standard regimented uh, soldiers uh, in human form. So why not spread your wings and paint mm. something like a cat? So there you go. <laughs> the, the skull mask for the necromancer or whatever it is i don't know if that's better or worse than because it is one of those horrible hairless pink things yeah anyway and they're creepy enough already so the fact that it's put a, a skull mask on is you know i think it improves the cat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ideal for people who still play inquisitor in 54 mil yeah, you could drop these in. There you go. Definitely heretics. Um, See? <laughs> if these are 54 mil, what does that make them size-wise? Like this sort of size? They're like that big. Like I guess that big. Yeah. I can answer this question via the medium of a 54 mil figure. And what, do you want, what do you want to see it beside? But remember, it's a, remember, it's like a it's a cartoony looking cat as well. Do, do you want Heroic to 54 mil. Oh, yeah. There you go. Actually... <laughs> no, because that's seventy odd mil. Um, Jerry yeah, has everything in his room. I, I do, but the the the, the literally the fifty four mil Inquisitor stuff sitting next door, and I'm not going to. Oh, get we've given it. up. So oh. yeah, I have given up. Just oh. a shame because you would have liked to see that, but you're not going to get. It if you, yeah, if you think like thirty five mil is probably about that big, if I put it next to my face, 
you know how big my face is, right? Standard reference face, right? So that's about 35, 32, 35 mils. So 54, 54 mils, probably about that big. So, yeah. Oh, wait, here we go. There you go. You can see it in, in approximation to a bunch of hands. So there you go. Yeah. That's the question answered right there. And they just look so lovely. I think these are some of the nicest little miniatures I've seen in a long time. Buried, yeah. So I'm not going anymore. Can't make no. me. I love how... Um, I was going to say interchangeable, but I suppose modular is a better term for the stretch goals. Mm. So you can throw in additional weapons and stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. swapping arms, swapping yeah. bits and bobs out. It's it's beautifully yeah. done, and they are really nice. I mean, we've seen with um, Northumbrian Tin Soldier, yes, and the mm. Cats of Crumpton, mm -hmm. uh, how incredibly popular that was, albeit in a more friendly scale i suppose is better yeah 20 mil people, stuff there, if people yeah. are already collecting yeah. things but these for display pieces on the shelves and stuff are great you think yeah. someone's used some fishing wire or fishing I'm line i'm thinking that yeah whiskers. nylon line in there for the yeah. whiskers i've got to say of all of the miniatures in their collection so far i think fernand the destroyer is my favorite because i just love the idea of this like badass windswept cat kicking ass it's very <laughs> <laughs> but you know you know that meme that was going around ma ma He's back, ma. That is the face of the cat. <laughs> it's looking at me, ma. <laughs> Imagine if you've seen that coming up to the front gates. And just surrender immediately. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. So we have some time left on this Kickstarter. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. So 23 Finally. days when the time you'll see in this. So, yeah. And well funded. So mm -hmm. If cats is your thing, I was getting excited about the little dog because I'm more of a dog person than a cat. I've seen one Bar little Barkley one little good. dog. That's it. See, we're, we're, what we're doing here really was we were trying to hit all the SEO goals because we've got cats and the internet, mm, so yeah. we've mashed the two together. So. Oh, we've made a cat video. This should be epic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. On <laughs> that Those epic note, ever. I'm going to draw this to a close. Remember, peeps, to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below to win that fancy pantsy look. And come on over to ontabletop.com and get a comment in there too to increase your chances of winning. Right, until next time, uh, enjoy your week of gaming. And if you want to see more from us, come on over and try the XLBS show on Sunday. See you later, peeps. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.